everybody. How's it going? Welcome to What is Fabrizio Inking on this very lazy, lazy Sunday. Um, so today I'm actually going to be inking an official page from Horse YouTuber number four. So spoilers, no spoilers, whatever. <laughs> but um, This is the book bug. I started it a couple weeks ago and we'll see how far I get today. And later, I will be showing a couple of proofs. Um, I re sort of laid out, designed text treatment, logo, and everything for the, the new published books. So I'm excited about that. I really like the print quality. So I'll, I'll show this a little later on when people pop in. Alrighty. Let's see. And if there's any issues with my mic, let me know. I, I have a new setup, new mic, all that jazz every time. So. Um, I think it looks good from the levels, but yeah, let me know. Hey, Dr. Mask, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a long time. Hope you're doing well. Sundays are always, uh, always tricky. They're kind of lazy. Usually people are out or taking a nap. That could just be me though, I don't know. A pretty crazy couple of weeks with work and all sorts of stuff, but Finally wrapping up, <clears throat> wrapping up some stuff for the for the new issues. So I'm really excited. Um, I added. I don't know how to describe it yet. Whenever I get the proofs out there, I'll I'll tell everybody the the new thing that I'm adding. But I'm really excited about it. It adds some more stories, some more like world building uh, to the issues that we currently have and and to the new ones coming out. So. It's just really exciting whenever whenever you get to add to the world uh, without adding 10 pages. I was able to do this sort of using some existing existing things already. I know it's kind of vague, but I'll definitely announce it maybe this coming week. But for now, I am back to inking books because apparently that is... <laughs> The only thing I draw is books. Seems I keep missing the live streams. Yeah, no problem. I mean, I get it. <laughs> Sundays are always hit or miss with me too, actually. Um, I usually keep Sundays for like errands and, and things I, I push off. So, you know run into the store or uh, finally digging that grave for that body that may or may not show up. I was actually discussing this with somebody. You know, even if you're not a killer, like say you're not a serial killer, it's not really even crossed your mind. I think it would behoove everybody to have at least one unmarked like d grave already dug even if you never use it, you know? Because it really seems like that's where people, you know, they unexpectedly murder somebody. Um, and then they gotta, oh geez, do I have a shovel? Do I really have the strength and constitution to dig a grave? So, I'm not saying everybody should do that, but I feel like maybe. Just a lot on your plate at the last minute. Right now, I think I'm on track to be able to hit um, Three Rivers Comic Con, which I've been trying to do for the past couple of years. And right now, I think. I think I should have everything printed for the Three Rivers. And fingers crossed how that works out, but should be able to, to have a table there and at the new books and pretty excited about that, especially since I don't have to travel. <laughs> it's just downtown. I'm not saying I don't want to travel, but you know.
we went uh, when I was in Baltimore, and I've talked about this before, but we stayed downtown just because I don't really know Baltimore very well. And wow, staying downtown was that was an experience. <laughs> I don't think I will be doing that again. It was a it was a little dicey. So it's nice to have some place to go when the show is over. We all know those last minute body dumps never go well. I know. I, I don't know why. That people aren't a little more proactive about that. These are usually the ideas that I, I pose to my coworkers in the morning whenever there's only a few of us. And I always feel like it'll be used against me in a court of law later on. <laughs> I hope not. Like, I don't know, Your Honor. He talked about burying bodies a lot. For someone who never had the need, seems like he was he was pretty focused on it. It's kind of like, um, you know, whenever you're writing things, you have to research stuff and it might be weird things you're researching, like, you know, how long does it take for a body to decompose or, you know, weird things like that. And I'm always a little reticent to do that because I'm like, well, we all know that your Google search history is basically written in stone and open for the public, whoever wants it at any given time. I remember this one time, uh, so I'm a software developer and I had created this, essentially it was an interactive like game, not a game, but it was a, it was a thing for hypodermic needles. This was at a nursing convention and the company wanted to essentially mimic how to inject a particular drug at a, a particular speed. So I needed some hypodermic needles. I didn't have any. I'm like, how am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna detect the, the speed and how is I gonna register and all this kind of stuff. And I remember going to like a Rite Aid, you know, pharmacy. And I, walk, I wake up or I walk up to the counter of the pharmacy and I'm like, I need 10 hypodermic needles. And as soon as I said it, I, I'm, I realized I sound like a meth head. And that, didn't go over nearly as well. And then I started backtracking. I'm like, oh, I'm 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 a developer and I'm I'm making this interactive and I did get them. But it was um, one of those moments where you just you realize how you sound and how that can go over. Hey cigar gangster, how's it going? How much, how much acid do you need to get rid of a body? Yeah, like the writer for um, Breaking Bad or something like that, where you really need to know specific things. I mean, I wonder if they just go to a, a random library to do their Google searches just to make sure. smart I would have killed off the book bug really quickly and saved my myself <clears throat> the countless hours of drawing these books but I like them too much if this was you know written in 10 years from now it would be like the the Kindle bug just have like a couple of iPads hanging off of them. 
San Fran, you can just find them all over the streets. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure they're all being used for software development. Have you guys been reading anything interesting lately? I actually just went to my local comic book shop and and I, I know I've mentioned this a million times. I just kind of head to the back issues and I've done that for years and years and years at this point. But for some reason, I'm like, you know what? I haven't even looked at new comics in so long. I'll, I'll walk by and see if anything, at least in the art, like strikes my fancy. And there were a few things I actually picked up. Um, one was Dracula from Image. The art looked really cool. It was um, like a watercolor. And it didn't look digital to me at all. It was like a loose watercolor. Reminded me of, I don't know, a combination of maybe John J. Muth or even a little Dave McKean, Arkham Asylum. But it looked really cool. I picked that up and uh, the Batman with Raphael Grampa. Because I, I, I've always liked his artwork, uh, but I never actually read anything. So, yeah, I have to admit, that was the first time I've actually picked up... Oh, and uh, the Frank Miller, the new Ronin stuff. New, quote-unquote. I mean, I loved the original Ronin. I know that uh, Philip Tan does the art for this this new series but I wanted to give it a give it a try at least I was in Baltimore early 90s and where I wasn't bad near Camden Yards I tried to go see Edgar Allan Poe house and the closer I got the sketchier it got oh yeah I've actually heard about that a friend of mine <laughs> I mean, he was going to see that Alan Poe house, and he said there was a shooting like around the corner. I'm like, that is sounds about right. Finally, I decided maybe I didn't need to see the house. That's probably a good idea. It would have been cool, but it really sounds like it's in a, a bad, bad spot. One reason I, I switched up all of my my cameras and my audio is the focus wasn't working for Max. It just it would work sometimes, it wouldn't work other times. So I ended up hooking everything up to a PC and the PC drivers for the cameras just work much better. So that way I can really zoom in to some areas. I was reading the first two issues of Cato from Innovation. 1980s was pretty good. I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, I will say I still did grab like a handful of back issues. <clears throat> Got some old X Factor and a couple Thor. Oh, the Green Hornet Cato. Okay. Yeah, I don't even, I don't remember seeing that comic.
That is not a hand. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep. It's gonna get some white out. I also just, I did order, pre-order, the Batman Year One Artist Edition, which I am ecstatic to get that. David Mazzucchelli is absolutely one of my all-time favorite artists. Year One, obviously, one of my favorite books. But it's so interesting to, to see those artist editions and seeing White Out and like decisions they scrapped last minute. And even from the cover, you can tell that David Mazzucchelli, um, he had put some shadow in Batman's legs and then whited it out last minute. Which is, it's really interesting. You know, somebody that I really consider to be like a top tier comic book artist, even though he didn't that, do that many things, but you know, the stuff he did do was just so incredible. Even he's making last minute judgment calls and, and changing things on the fly. Now, I don't know what kind of input Frank Miller would have had for the artwork, but... Oh, my Baron wrote it. I realize I've never really shown books that I like. I know a lot of people do that. I really should. There's at least some that I don't think people might be aware of. There's a few that I, that I always reference. Uh, Dylan Dog, which is an Italian book, but there is an English transvert translation of that. Um, and Brendan, which is another Italian book, but I don't think there's an actual English translation for that. It's one of my favorite books though. It's sort of this, it's like a post-apocalyptic kind of thing meets, this is going to sound strange, meets The Crow in 2000 AD, but really, really cool stuff. Really creative, interesting character design. I would say even if you don't speak Italian, which I realize most people don't, um, the artwork and the storytelling is so good, you know, you could get it and absolutely kind of follow along. And this, this up here, I did this last time. And I ended up whiting it out. <clears throat> and I rarely use white out. Not because I have anything against it. I mean, it's what you, know, it's what you need to do. Um, it's just, it can be a pain to pull out later. You know, you'll still see a little bit of gray or it's, it's just tough. Especially working with blue line. So I just try to avoid whiting out things if possible, but sometimes it's it's unavoidable. I was at New Hampshire Comic Con yesterday. Spent my money on art and back issues. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I... Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if the original art is, is making a comeback or not 
feel like there's always been at least one table booth that has some some decent uh, original artwork. Um, I think it'll it'll I think it'll become more and more popular as uh, all those back issues increase in prices. Got two Batman comics from Columbia. Oddly enough, they were Ashcan's ass comics. That is cool. Yeah, there's just something about getting those different versions of books that you already have, or just the different different styles. Printing is always different. Sizes you just handle things different. Like I have Sin City in Italian as well. A couple other things, not a ton. Bringing that stuff back in suitcases was always a pain. Of course, now you can you can get them on Amazon now, but this was this was a long time ago. Before Amazon, was there a time before Amazon? Sometimes I don't want to record all of my inking videos because once you realize how long things take, sometimes it's worse. Like, uh, wow, that took, it took six hours to ink that page or eight hours. But it is good to know. thing is about these books is you know if I was to use 3d models to, to either trace or even reference at all which I have never done and I, I, I don't plan on doing um, books is the one thing that would be so easy um, yeah like this you know instead of me manually like laying out each book and you could really shorthand it pretty quickly in 3d but it would look 3d i know there's been some discussion <laughs> that's in that's a uh, putting it mildly there's been some discussion about using 3d models yeah i can't stand the look i think it, it looks i think it looks terrible honestly um But I guess it's to each his own as far as the end product. But I really like to see the variation in line weight and perfect perspective looks strange. Um, it's almost like if somebody sings a song with and they are 100 percent like in perfect pitch and perfect tune. I'm not saying it sounds bad, but sometimes it can sound essentially mechanical. Um, and even if you can't tell what it is, you know it. Just something about it's off. You know, there's a lot of... I mean, this goes for a lot of old uh, comic books too, unfortunately. I can spot the use of a, a photograph immediately. And, you know, I get it deadlines and all that kind of stuff but it does for a split second it pulls me out of the story i don't know what it is but 
you know, unless it's Alex Ross that does photographs for every single panel, then your, your brain kind of uses that as the template for the rest of the, the issue. But if you're just a regular artist with a particular style and you're having problems and you're struggling with a face, so you use a reference or a photo, it, man, it sticks out so bad. I would rather, I would honestly rather you mess up the face in your style than reference 3D or a photograph. And I'm not, when I say reference, I shouldn't use reference. I, I guess I should say just tracing outright. Using reference is fine, of course. Um, when you trace it, it looks, and it's got a, a really specific quality to it. Uh, did you create Horse Tuber logo? If so, how did you do it? Assuming yes, since you, yeah, handle everything. <laughs> yeah, I did do the logo. Um, I use Illustrator for most vector illustration kind of things, although I will recommend Affinity Designer. Um, I've been using Adobe products for 20 years, so I know them really, really well, but I really like Affinity's products. So I'm trying to kind of bring Affinity Designer into the fold for vector type stuff. And as far as the logo, you know, I have done design in the past. It's one of my, you know, skill sets that I had to leverage at certain points. Um, basically, I like to just start out with a regular font. So just pick a font that looks good to you and once you have sort of the, the quality of the font, so, you know, a handwritten font versus a, like a horror looking font, then it's just a matter of kind of tweaking it. So maybe you scale the H and you keep the O the same size. You scale another letter, you keep the other one down. And it's really just about adjusting it. Keep adjusting it until you get something that something that you're happy with but, but also something that doesn't look like it's just a font because that is kind of a dead giveaway um, that it is just a font so you really want to you want to change it enough so it it feels like it was worked on I know that sounds kind of vague and weird but yeah I went through a bunch of iterations of it and I really knew I had the logo that I wanted whenever I just used it. I just took the white version of it and I put it on black background. And the first thing I thought of was like a 1920s silent movie. And as soon as that, that like feeling hit me, I'm like, okay, this is, this is what I want. And I tweaked it a little bit after that, but I knew, I knew I was going in the right direction at that point. Some guys have made a career out of tracing. I know, I know. And you know, yeah, I sure have. I just wouldn't have fun doing it. It, it wouldn't feel, I don't know. It wouldn't feel like my work at that point, so. It'd be pretty strange. And even whenever, you know, you, you see what are called the swipe files, they always pop up once in a while. Somebody finds, uh, you know, a photo reference, a uh, tracing or something like that. Those people, for the most part, I mean, nothing really, quote unquote, happens to them. They still get the same kind of work. You know, they still work, still do the, the comics that they've always done. Um, so, you know, I think it bothers artist and it bothers bothers consumers man it does not seem to bother the higher ups at these publishing companies because it doesn't affect them giving them work at all you'd think the bad press would do something but they just dismiss any negative comments basically
Yeah, I mean, obviously, the first person that comes to mind for me is Brad Street. And I'm not, I don't want to say anything bad or whatever, but I remember listening to an interview, and it really sounded like it sounded like he gets it all the time from people about tracing, and he just had had it, <laughs> you know. And he's been around for a long time. I think he's still doing things. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, that interview was like I. It actually made me feel bad for him because I think it's just a constant critique and criticism that he gets. <clears throat> but I also think if you if you trace that much, you know, it has to sort of sink in to your skill set. And I feel like if, if you spent so many hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours, thousands of hours probably tracing photographs, that the muscle memory would translate to some degree. So I think you could probably start to draw on your own without, without using photographs. I think that's, it seems like that would happen. kind of Greg Land. Oh yeah, he's another. He's definitely in, in the swipe files threads that I see. Um, it's kind of like learning, I guess, somebody else's music. You know, um, if you're in a cover band or something like that and you're playing <laughs> Wasp for three years straight uh, and you're, you're learning Blackie Lawless' solos, I feel like that stuff eventually just rubs off on you and absolutely um, helps you sort of think like that person. So I think it's similar. John's long box. Can you draw Spider-Man or Batman? I like Spider-Man and Batman. <laughs> I, let me think. Have I ever drawn Spider-Man and Batman? Even when I was pretty young and I was drawing, I don't know if I've ever, like I, I liked Daredevil, I was a big Daredevil fan, so if I was gonna draw a superhero, probably Daredevil. I don't know if I've ever drawn Spider-Man. This is where somebody throws a, an image in chat, like this is Fabrizio, 12 years old, drawing Spider-Man, but I, I don't remember ever drawing Spider-Man, to be honest. I, I liked him, but it wasn't just, this sounds pretentious again, but you know, at that time I was probably trying to draw uh, a man with no name, you know, I'm like Clint Eastwood, cowboys probably, fantasy stuff, um, No, I get it. As far as tweaking the font, I used to mess around hand drawing logos. Oh, that's cool. I think I'm going to try Clip Studio. Only 20 bucks one time fee. Yeah, people love Clip Studio. I love the fact that there's competitors to Adobe. Adobe has just been sitting on its butt for many, many years. Not really innovating much because I've been using it for 20, I don't know, 25 years. I don't know how long I've been using Photoshop. I still, for the most part, use the same five, six tools. Spider Gwen or Gwenpool are my favorite. <laughs> How about Gwen G. Hoover? Yeah, that's actually, that's coming up. Um, I will say this, that Thor that I did, I think got the most views of any video I've ever done. No, no, the Hawkman. Yeah, so um, I think I might do another one of those. I wanted to do Doctor Strange. There's a few. There's a few characters that I've always wanted to draw. I love the Creeper. I know that's a, a weird one, but he, he always fascinated me. Um, Creeper, Doctor Strange, the Demon. Things that are a little more up my alley Hawk 
Gwen. I would get 40,000 views on that one. I will say the Hawkman was a lot of fun to draw, so it was more fun than I kind of thought it would be. Um, it's such a nice break from books, from drawing books over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Who wrote this thing with these damn books? Jeez. Right, that was me. All superheroes should have a Gwen version. <laughs> I mean, that goes without saying. Dead Man. Dead Man's another hero that really was fascinating to me. Just like the character design, loved it. Love the creeper too. Feel like we're along those brothers. Yes, nobody knows the creeper. I mean, they know him, but he, I don't know if he's been used in DC for years. I haven't really paid attention, but such a wild character. Dead Gwen. So is Dead Gwen a combination of Dead Pool and Gwen or Dead Man and Gwen? Because Gwen, oh, that's right, it's Gwen Pool. Sorry, I'm getting my uh, portmanteaus messed up. You seem like a more DC guy than Marvel guy. Me? Yeah, 100%. I mean, m my comic books, it's like 10 to 1 um, for me. Not because I didn't like it. I know I mentioned it before. I just didn't have access to DC stuff when I was a kid. But there's some characters that really, like Firestorm is one of them. I always love that character design. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is one of my all-time favorite uh, costume character designs. The the Ted Cord, Blue Beetle. But yeah, I, di I didn't read too much. Later on, I picked up collected stuff, but when I was a kid, a few here and there, basically. How about the other long-lost Ditko hero, the Stalker? can't think of the stalker the name sounds familiar but I can't can't picture him I have to google that if my computer will let me know that at all yeah that's where my lack of DC knowledge apparently ends yeah I, I love Blue Beetle so much that weird current I don't, I don't know like that black mask face thing without a nose it's so strange to me start another fan piece fan art 
I'll pick I'll pick one of those, the creeper or Yeah, that'd be fun. the fedora trench coat guys yeah phantom strangers cool yeah so classic <clears throat> can't go wrong couple of rare book dealers on Instagram. I'm endlessly fascinated by these these old books. You'd think eventually I'd would shift my attention, but my whole life, I don't know what it is. Um, I could open a business and start an antique rare bookstore. I would do it in a minute. And granted, customers would probably come through the door. They'd be ringing the bell. Hello? Hello? And they'd find me in some corner smelling books. But, you know, at least there would be books there. Are you going to name each book? <laughs> you're just trying to give me more work. I think what you're doing. Um, I will at least put, you know, some symbols or some languages in, on some of these books that some will be real, some will be, we'll say, made up. Um, something like that. If, if I went and I put actual text on every single one of these books can't be certain but I feel like it would just it would be so busy that your eye would not know where to go um, I mean if I was a you know if I was Bernie Wrightson I could probably do that but um, I'm just gonna have to essentially pick out a few books maybe the one he's looking at Maybe one here, there, and one over there, just to kind of give the impression. I have actually started to write down all of my Easter eggs because I started to forget. Um, I would use, <clears throat> I would translate certain phrases or, or things and put them on books or you know, other locations. And I went back to look at it and I realized I forgot what I had done. I forgot the language and what I had translated. So I'm going to actually start writing on the back of each page very specifically as much, you know, as many Easter eggs as I can, because if not, I'm now I know it'll get lost. So if somebody buys a piece of original artwork from me moving forward, they'll probably see notes back there about any any languages or symbols used and where they come from even foreshadowing maybe little clues about what's going on wow it's 4:49 that actually went pretty quickly thanks for popping in guys i i appreciate it i do want to show some of those proofs that i got cuz i am ecstatic so happy about these these books um kind of hard to describe but you know whenever you have something printed or fabricated or or just made the thing that you see on your screen and then the thing that actually you hold in your hand or, or whatever the case may be sometimes can be so different 
that it's a little disappointing and then you've got to get used to that new shift. But these proofs that I have really are as closely aligned to my original design and, and color choice as I've seen yet. So really excited about that. <clears throat> I'll just finish it up in a minute and I'll pop over and show some stuff. So just a reminder, uh, John from John's Long Box coming out with a comic book. Crowdfunding, oh, I think the 19th, no, 20th. Uh, I'll throw the date in there, John, when you get a chance to. It's called Heroic Tales, and we be starting soon. There will be a little, we'll say, I don't want to say a cameo of Horse H. Hoover, because he's not in the comic book, but you will see some of my art in the, in the comic, which is really fun. I'm excited about that. Yeah, this year is going to be fun. I think uh, a lot of stuff going on. Excited to see you again at Plastic City Comic Con. This time you have comics with you. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited. So we'll have to chat. And... You get to see the books. You'll probably be the one of the first to see the books. So, all right. April 26 at 9 p.m. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed to John's Long Box, check it out. Great interviews and, and comic reviews, all sorts of cool stuff. So these are <clears throat> some proofs. Um, the one thing you may notice is I, well, first the imprint is Gloomy Wood Comics. So that's the logo for Gloomy Wood. And then I essentially have this top like header banner. Um, I kind of went back and forth on the, on the um, corner box. I think future issues will be in the corner box, but this it, it kind of lets me differentiate between the miniseries and like an ongoing. Um, plus it really, you know, from an artistic or creative design standpoint, I can really work the colors in better using that that banner color. So these turned out really nice. I'm really happy with them. And just to kind of go, some of the, the printing looks really nice. It's as close to what I had on my screen as, as I really thought I could get. So I am really excited about this. Um, yeah. Really clear, nice printing. And one of my favorite things about this, um, compared to some other printers, is the printing's flat, so there's no gloss in the ink at all, which that happens sometimes. Um, it depends, it's sort of, it's subjective for sure, but really happy with this. And then of course the issue that started it all. Um, yeah, so what I think I'm going to do is, I don't know if I mentioned this, but right now I think the plan is to finish these five issues out and then do a crowdfunder uh, for basically alternate covers, um, some extra pages, some other materials, things like that. We'll kind of see how it goes. I'm playing it by ear. Um, but yeah, check it out. I will definitely post things on Twitter and let people know. Yes, HHH is the 
in the comic, but he's not in the comic. Yes, I don't. <laughs> I think that's the best way to say it without without giving away too much. Looks great. Thank you. Thanks. Do they bulge in the middle or are they flat? So they do bulge a little bit, but I bought a book press, which essentially will to clamp and it'll clamp down these like stacks of books. So the goal is to press them all so they'll be nice and flat. Yeah, the bulge kind of bugged me a little bit. So I'm like, well, I bought a book press and that should fix it. Will you, oh, hey, Captain good night. How's it going? Will you go with the printer with the best smelling books? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I, for me, it ended up being the like the flatness uh, of the ink and the the print quality. Ultimately, that's kind of how it went. I mean, and price too, but um, I'm gonna make these as cheap as I can. Honestly, uh, I don't really. <clears throat> Yeah, I know it, it's not newsprint, and I it's a, it's unfortunate, but man, that is really difficult unless you have a huge run. Um, so I'm I'm trying to do the best I can with the current setup. So they really pop. Thanks, I appreciate it, Doctor Mask. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. It's one of those deals where it's first you're a little nervous. And then you start to get the proofs in and you get excited and then you get more excited to get these into people's hands. So why gloomy wood? So um, gloomy wood, <clears throat> uh, Dante's Inferno, like the, the intro mentions a dark wood and Dore, the illustrator, in one of his prints, I think put gloomy wood as the reference to it. So I'm like, okay, I do, I have Dante's Inferno. I've read it before. I've read the Italian, um, and I have a I have a book with the English and the Italian translation on the other side. So I'm like, let me see if this is a an interpretation versus translation thing. No. Um, so I read it in Italian. Technically, it is dark wood, but I liked gloomy and I liked a little bit of. It it was just vague enough in the Italian where I could, I feel like gloomy wood was cool. I know that's a long story, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where I got it. I really, I just liked the idea of gloomy wood, you know, and it's sort of this, let me focus in. Ooh. It's kind of this uh, skeleton-y tree branch hand. So yeah, so that's my, uh, that's my reason for gloomy wood. Um, Scratch and sniff book bug card coming soon. <laughs> wow. Do they still make scratch and sniff? I bet they do. That would be something special. How soon can we order these? So I am, I think I'm going to get one last batch of like final proofs just to make sure a hundred percent we're good. Then I'll order the final books. Um, I'm not sure. I think it might take total three or four weeks to get like a big batch of them. I am going to be going to, to some comic cons. So I have to set some aside for the comic cons. Um, and then I will probably post them on my website. I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. Um, I don't know what, what people prefer. I don't know if they want to do the crowdfunder or if they just want to order from my store. So I'll probably just kind of talk to people on Twitter and kind of see what they, what they say. I'm open to whatever at this point, you know, as long as whatever's more convenient for people. Um, it is a cool name. Thank you. I appreciate it. What would it smell like? That is a good question. The book bug. I mean, he just wears paper and books. So I think the, the worst version of that. Yeah, old books and, you know, I don't know how... We don't see a shower in the in the the house of knowledge. Um, you know, maybe there's a like a spring or some moisture collected down there under the library, so he can bathe. Let's let's hope that that's the case. Because if not, that would be horrific in a whole other whole other kind of way. Alrighty, yeah. Thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Um, I will probably get back to streaming on Sundays at least. If not, um, I'll see you on Twitter, Instagram, and all of the above. Everybody have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks. Bye.